Almost Never Too Late by Jeffrey Howe. Fade in. Exterior nondescript suburban home. Day. The sprinkler oscillates in the backyard. Gnome statues drip. A toddler plays with a toy shovel and bucket in the sandbox. Super. Hadron, Ohio, early 21st century. Behind the sandbox stands a weathered privacy fence. In the neighbor's yard, a circular patch of grass tosses in a non-existent wind. An electric sizzle grows in volume. It culminates with a flash. In the sandbox, the toddler looks at the fence, then resumes shoveling. In the neighbor's yard, Steve, 30, and as naked as the jaybird he startled, stands on a patch of suddenly brown lawn. He looks down, annoyed. Through Steve's android eyes, a heads-up display shows helpful text. Clothes in temporal transit, buffering, please wait, with a spinning beach ball. Ads for anti-UV dermal shielding, cranial implants, fembots love more RAM, and home refinancing blink in the corners. In the neighbor's yard, another flash and sizzle. Steve's clothes appear in an unkempt and newly desiccated rose bush a few feet away. Assassin's log. Temporal Crux Alpha 20-Z. He recovers his clothes from the bush's thorny grasp. Radiator fluid drips from a cut on his hand. He dresses. Arrived at designated space-time coordinates. Following protocol. Through Steve's android eyes, the words locating target, Imperium the flesh reaver, blink. A video loop of an eight-foot-tall, four-armed cyborg blasting away at a terrified mob in an apocalyptic wasteland pops up. A moment later, a photo of the toddler appears next to it. 100% match, flashes, followed by immediate sanction. In the neighbor's yard, Steve, in somewhat shredded garments, skulks to the fence. In the sandbox, the top of Steve's head pops up over the top of the fence. Through Steve's android eyes, a targeting reticle appears around the toddler with a drop-down menu. Decapitate, disembowel, rend limb from limb. Steve picks disembowel. A Facebook-like thumbs-up displays. In the neighbor's yard, Steve makes to hop the fence. A woman's hand grabs the back of his neck and flings Steve across the neighbor's yard. He rolls to his feet and prepares to attack his assailant, Beth, 40-ish, in a glowing green jumpsuit, unimpressed. She looks Steve up and down. 23rd century, right? Model 12 assassin. Steve, serious? Steve, nonplussed, narrows his eyes. Through Steve's android eyes, a target hovers over Beth. WTF blinks. In the neighbor's yard, Steve leaps at Beth. Beth slaps him across the yard with little effort. Her jumpsuit flares blue when she does so. How did you know? Agent Beth Bozen, Time Patrol, got a report of a botched crux repair. A billion souls will perish at the fiend's hands if I fail. He rolls to his feet and attacks again. In the sandbox, the toddler seems to be burying something. The sound of Steve getting smacked around drifts over from next door. In the neighbor's yard, Beth and the battered Steve circle each other. Through Steve's android eyes, a cursor on a menu. Emergency requisition lights up. Yeah, no, you guys got your history threads crossed. New options, backup, extract, weapon, Steve picks the last. Killing the kid drives his mom, biophysicist, insane. The next list, grenade launcher, laser, flamethrower, and Steve's selection, BFG-9000. She makes a clone, clone goes bad, and ta-da! You just created the timeline you were trying to stop. In the neighbor's yard, Steve stands on the patch of dead grass. Sizzle, flash, and a nasty-looking gun shows up. He points it at Beth. A pop. And both Steve and Beth are frozen in faint red bubbles, courtesy of Ajax-1, 20, androgynous in flowing robes. Ajax-1 stands in front of a door-shaped hole in reality. Actually, you're both wrong. Your fight traumatizes the child, and that creates the Imperium time. Another pop and another door. Ajax-1 is cut off by Ajax-2, whose tattered robes suggest a recent firefight. No, they must fight, or they won't be able to stop. A shimmer heralds the appearance of none other than evil Imperion, who aims his four guns at the four figures. Too late! He disintegrates Steve, Beth, and both Ajaxes. He looms over the smoking spots they just stood on, stroking his goatee. Now nothing can. His evil synthesized cackle fades almost immediately. Steve, Beth, and both Ajaxes reappear. What? How? A blast from behind him knocks him over and reveals good Imperion, his goatee-free mirror universe doppelganger. It's almost never too late to change the future. 
for a long moment, the six time travelers eye each other. In the sandbox, while the hubbub commences next door, the toddler digs. In the neighbor's yard, Ajax 1 tries to trap Steve in a red bubble, but Beth throws Ajax 2 in the way. She makes an annoyed growl in her throat. Steve jumps on Evil Empyrean's back. Evil Empyrean disintegrates him, but also gets one of his own arms. Good Empyrean tries to reintegrate Steve, who appears with Evil Empyrean's extra arm. Good Empyrean looks stricken. No worries. Steve grabs Evil Empyrean with a new arm, Ajax 1 with his other two, then cracks their heads together. Beth tackles Steve. Ajax 2 grabs Beth. On the sidelines, ancient wizard 60, sporting a feathered bishop's mitre, stands with a reptilian alien observer recording the mayhem. The alien observer emits a garbled whistle shriek. Super. Atlantis, right? Great hat. Those moa feathers? Ancient wizard gestures. Mystic symbols glow in the air. Super. Thanks, and yeah. Omicron Persei? Another shrill noise. The alien observer waves at the rocks. Super. Yes, do they always end up like this? Ancient wizard nods and sighs. More glowing sigils. Super. Every time I've been here. In the sandbox, a shiny sphere arcs over the fence and into the sand next to the toddler. Picks it up, fascinated. The ball has a number of green lights on it. The toddler twists the top. The green turns to blinking red. The toddler lobs it back over the fence. Strobing light and darkness and a horrible sucking sound ensue there. The toddler climbs a tricycle next to the fence, peers over. The neighbor's yard is empty. No brown patches mar the grass. The toddler returns to the sandbox. At the bottom of the hole he's been filling sit a human skull and part of a skeletal hand. Fucking time travelers. He empties the bucket, covering the bones, and pats the sand smooth. Fade to black.